All right. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us and uh, sharing Dharma and community and practice. And even if you're not able to be here with us on the Zoom call, please know that you are felt as part of community, as part of Sangha. There is an awareness of practicing with you. So I hope you can feel that to some extent. And so I wanted to talk tonight. Uh, I'm, I, I can't imagine that um, there's a way to have not noticed that um, tis the season of desire that uh, I, I think like the, what are the Black Friday sales? Like, started like a month ago or something it's like pre-black friday and black friday and early black friday it's just like mm, stuff that comes in the mail and mm, newsletters and whatever if you subscribe to emails of things just ah inundated with uh, all the things and then there's also cyber monday is now a thing which i think is around um buying things online. I think that's what Cyber Monday is about. Uh, yeah, so <sighs> just um, the inundation of delights for the senses and um, the fueling of desire. And so I wanted to talk tonight particularly about the antidotes to desire. Um, an antidote, in the English language anyways, it is um, a medicine to counteract a poison. <laughs> so some of us might not think of desire as a poison, um, because there can be skillful desires of uh, wanting to cultivate a meditation practice, of wanting a desire to... Mm, well, how do you say, um, be free from an addiction, uh, the desire to mm, make a contribution in the world, you know, so these are obviously not poisonous desires, these are skillful and wholesome onward leading intentions. But here, we're talking about a particular form called Kamachanda. And uh, that is one of the five hindrances, the hindrance of desire. And um, so just to clarify, so I mentioned Kama Chanda. This is a Pali word. The language, the teachings of the Buddha were written down in. And the Kama part of that is not Kama as in Karma, K-A-M-M-A. -M -M -A. It's Kama with a long A, an accent over the first A, and there's only one M. So it's a different, sounds similar, but I just wanted to, because it can be confusing. It's like karma. Okay, so kamachanda is the hindrance of sensual desire. I love Gil Fronsdale's description or definition of this particular form of desire, sensual desire. Uh, he calls it a, compulsive preoccupation with sensual pleasure and comfort compulsive preoccupation with sensual desire sensual pleasure and comfort so this really clarifies what we're talking about here that it's not you know these wholesome desires but it's this um, preoccupation with sense desire to getting what we want and constantly mm, reaching for and looking for pleasing ourselves with sights, with touch, with taste, with um, all of these five sense doors. Um, the mind isn't usually included in, in this grouping of sense doors, um, but it certainly could be, I think. <laughs> Yeah, and it's something we all experience 
unless we're fully enlightened beings, um, not. And uh, so it's part of this human being experience. It's something that all meditators experience. And it's something that Siddhartha Gautama, who became enlightened, experienced and taught about. And these are part of what we're sharing tonight. And uh, uh, there's a great deal to share around this hindrance of sense desire. But I just wanted to focus particularly tonight on the antidotes to this. The, um, the medicine to counteract the poison. So to, to really see and know in what ways is this harming me and harming each other and harming absolutely our world, our environment, because it's fueling greed and um, that comes at a cost usually to those who are less privileged. <clears throat> uh, so to, to begin to explore or to deepen your exploration of the role that Kamachanda, sense desire, the hindrance of sense desire is, is playing in your life and if it seems necessary, helpful, skillful, onward leading for you to see which of these antidotes we're going to share might be helpful for you to cultivate. They're all good. <laughs> but, you know, maybe one thing in particular really lands for you or feels most helpful. Traditionally, the main antidote uh, to this particular hindrance is akagata, one-pointedness, meaning one-pointed attention um, or tranquility or unification of mind, unification of attention. And this comes from deeper states of meditation where uh, there's many other factors involved and lots of cultivation where the attention can really rest on one pointedness, on one anchor. And in that state, the hindrance of desire is absent because there's no wanting or needing anything else. However, it is temporary. <laughs> then the bell rings, the meditation's over, and... Uh, we're back into seeing life and uh, being affected by sense desires and uh, their strong pull on us. The more we practice in that way, the more stability there is and the more continuity of awareness and less uh, compulsion, less preoccupation. Um, so there is some there is some fruit, of course, from continuing with one pointed deepening practices. But uh, and not but and uh, some other tools that um, might be helpful for all of us. Hmm. So one of these is generosity. The more we practice giving, the more we feel the fruits, the, uh, the joy, the fullness, and less neediness within us, less, uh, less desire. Um, hmm because there's such a reciprocity and joy in generosity. And just to include in that the caveat perhaps that uh, 
giving to the extent of harming yourself is not generosity because it needs to include an awareness of how things are for you. So, you know, if you're one of these, uh, uh, someone that tends to like max out their credit card at uh, a giving season, um, that's not considered generosity because it's harming yourself. So it needs to include an awareness of what's possible for you. And there's so many ways to be generous that don't include depleting our own self-care. Generosity of attention, generosity of presence. Mm. You know, all the things we can do for each other and to care for each other, including in ourselves. And uh, so we, we can, it's pretty clear connection around how that can be an antidote to just wanting to get whatever I can get to please myself. Okay, very related to generosity, but different, is uh, oh, nakama, yes, uh, renunciation. It's, of course, renunciating, it means giving up, letting go. So it's not just um, generosity or dana, um, supporting others, but also seeing like, what do I really need? <laughs> do I have what I need? Um there's such a liber it's very important part of the path of liberation is renunciation. And the kind of ultimate renunciation is the renunciation of this self and protecting the self and building up the self and fortifying the self and getting all that uh, pleases the self this uh so to reflect do i have you know what's needed and these are called the requisites in meditation do i have safe housing do i have uh supportive health care medicine do i have nurturing food sleep i think is is the fourth requisite um so to see, yeah, is there enoughness here? Okay, so we have generosity and renunciation as um, helpful parts of the path to help uh, as antidotes to desire the sense desire hindrance. Another one is gratitude. Again, closely related, but really uh, cultivating. There's so many benefits to a gratitude practice. Some people, you know, write before bed or start their day with some reflections on gratitude. Um, the simple things that we may overlook that we may be taking for granted like uh Thich Nhat Hanh calls um the non-toothache uh, or the absence of a toothache like we don't notice it because it we we notice it when we have a toothache but do we notice oh the gratitude of oh no pain in this part of the body or um Clean water coming out of taps. So many taps in my house. It just water, just the access to clean water is incredible. So practicing gratitude is another antidote to just feeling that sense of fullness, abundance, enoughness that can be a great help. Um, another antidote is, are the insights 
uh, particularly into impermanence. So especially with regards to the things the, that we see that we want. To see them as already broken, <laughs> to see them as already scratched and marred or lost, uh, to see their conditioned arising, that that's not actually the source of happiness or fulfillment. It's um, temporary and impermanent. And uh, this can free us a lot from excessive wanting. If the object of our desire is uh, in another person, um, it can, one of the antidotes to this form of, the, of desire is um, reflections on contemplating It's a challenging word in English, but uh, the repulsiveness of the body that uh, to actually see and also death and impermanence, but, you know, to see some being that we're, we think this is a person, this is the one that I want or need uh, to see aging, sickness and death. To see the, the body, you know, that maybe is uh, some reflection of desire um, in its true nature. Aging, sometimes very ill, and eventually dying. Uh, and these are liberating insights. They're not morbid or gross, or they free us from projecting, over-projecting, or compulsive preoccupation with others, and also with ourselves and our own attainments of beauty or, um, what is it, longevity. <laughs> Good luck with that. Um, <laughs> This is not to say, of course, to take care of the body, this beautiful vehicle, and to nourish ourselves and take care, but not to be obsessively, compulsively attached to uh, the pursuit of what is impermanent. Uh, another antidote to sense desire hindrance these are just ones that I was brainstorming today, um, is mudita. This is one of the Brahma Vihara practices, the, the heart cultivation practice, the cultivation of a free and generous and compassionate heart mind. So mudita helps counteract envy when we see someone else having something that we want um, can take all the forms of all, all the wanting, whatever it is. It's not just things, it's, you know, could be relationships, it could be a job, it could be whatever. But it, it uh, has a stickiness to it uh, that we desire what they have. And the mudita practice is um, the practice of cultivating harmonic or resonant joy in someone else's good fortune or well-being. And it counteracts this sense of not enough, not enoughness, to um, um, really feel, you know, I'm happy for you and may your success continue. May that um, good fortune grow. And uh, because it comes from this sense of scarcity of that, that um, there isn't enough to go around. Um, and 
why do they have so much and and I don't and that's uh, so painful and contracts us and separates us and it's a way to untether our own heart in relationship with others and to free us as an antidote to this hindrance desire. So that's a, a bunch. Uh, this one's not really an antidote, but it's a bonus. Uh, <laughs> it's a preventative of protect the sense doors. And this is something we hear often in the Dharma to protect the sense doors. So this means uh, throw out the flyers unless there's something particular you're looking for. Cancel the e-newsletters of the, you know, shopping that you've signed up for. Be careful of what apps are on your devices that, you know, are instant access um, and, and sending you things like this, this one always comes to mind, but what was it called? We used to get this catalog because how did we ever get it in the first place? I don't know. Well, as soon as you buy something from some company, you end up on a mailing list and most places don't send catalogs anymore because it costs them too much, but some still do. Anyways, this one was called Hammaker Slammer. <laughs> Hammer. Hammaker Schlemmaker or something. It was like this weird name that I can't think of. You're probably going, oh, I know the one. And it had a, they've gone downhill. We don't get it anymore. But uh, there were these, you'd see these things like, I didn't know I needed that. Now I need that. <laughs> so it's like these really wild, unique, random sometimes creative or sometimes clever things but it was like oh I had no thought that that was something I wanted or certainly needed um until you see it and then it's like oh, 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 oh. so this is protecting the sense stores unsubscribe be careful of um what you're taking in that fuels this hindrance so I've said many times, referred to this as a hindrance. So what is it hindering? In the Dharma, the Buddha gave beautiful images that are, are helpful to me of, and hopefully to you for each of the five hindrances. I'm just talking about one tonight. Of So the image hmm, around this hindrance is that back in the day before there were mirrors it said that a shallow bowl of water was used as a reflecting device a, a, a reflection bowl so a, a bowl with still water that you could look into and see clearly you could see through the water and you could also see reflected back like a mirror. And so you could picture that bowl, some of the suttas it's described as a pond, um, that's covered with beautiful colored dyes or dropped onto the surface of the water. Beautiful turquoise and magentas and gold and um, sapphire colors covering the surface of the water and intermingling and uh, and we become just so entranced by the beauty and the delight and the sense pleasure in that eye sense door of just oh it's so pretty <laughs> and of course it obstructs it hinders clear seeing we can no longer see a clear reflection and we can't see through uh, so this desire kamachanda hindrance of sensual desire hinders clear seeing hinders 
wisdom hinders calm yes and more mm, okay that's enough I, I, I... yes I'm not going to say that <laughs> hmm just seeing if there's any other thoughts I want to add here. Um, no. no. Uh, so I hope there's something skillful in there for you to cultivate at this time. Protect the sense doors. Practice generosity. Renunciation. Gratitude. Insights into impermanence. Joy. Mudita with... Um, good fortune that others may be experiencing uh, and in particular meditation mindfulness one pointedness so let's practice meditation now if you're joining us for this part uh, so gather what you need to feel supported supported awake and relaxed Take a moment to adjust your posture or your lighting. Oh, speaking of beautiful colors on a pond, look at that. You could imagine. <laughs> there they are there. Look at that. <laughs> That's what the surface of the water would look like. <clears throat> I'm just going to mute and take another. Hmm. So as you're settling, arriving, landing, <clears throat> not to hurry into it, really take your time. You might need some movement. Or some deeper breaths or some touch. Especially if your days had a lot of momentum and fullness and busyness, just a sighing breath or a comforting touch. And when you feel supported and comfortable to begin to gather into some stillness, and see and know this is already an aspect of renunciation. Letting go of outer distractions. Letting go of any compulsive um, doing or preoccupation. And just coming to rest. Let the eyes come to rest, either downward or closed, or resting with a soft gaze on something peaceful. Inviting a sense of peace into the muscles of the face, releasing or widening the tension of worry in the center of the forehead or pressure at the temples or top of the head.
Resting eyes, resting face. Feeling into the area of the neck, throat, shoulders. And seeing if any contraction or tension there could just slide off the shoulders or down the arms, dripping off the fingertips. Feeling into the areas of the heart center and the belly center. And just noticing any tension here. Fear, worries, grief. Letting it all be. But just giving some soft space around how things are. And if a little bit, maybe just a small percentage of softening could come to those tensions. In particular, I practice quite a bit with soft belly meditation, feeling into those deeper inner layers of the belly where the nervous system really gets contracted and activated. And then really feeling and knowing the beautiful weight of this body letting it land into the support that you're on. Letting heaviness be a support to your presence in relationship with the ground. And then we'll gently practice some contemplation tonight to just float in, invite in, not a thinking, doing activity, but just opening now to gratitude. Nothing forced or pushed, just floating open, being receptive to any gratitudes that may show. Just trusting what organically arises for you as we open to knowing and feeling gratitude. We'll practice this together in silence for these next few minutes.
and included with gratitude might come some reflection or awareness of what are called our benefactors, our guides, our mentors, our teachers. And this can include those we haven't personally met or that, that have been a support, a source of wisdom. It might include animals, it might include nature, so see uh, if something arises there for you with the uh, gratitude. And then we'll gently transition now to some cultivation of this heart quality called mudita. That counteracts envy. So bringing into awareness or seeing what arises. Mm. Maybe recalling uh, uh, some time where you maybe felt a wanting or a sense of envy of what others may have in in whatever way, whether it's health or relationship or, um, yeah, all the ways. And not to add any layers of judgment, but to notice if we feel a sense of um, cutting ourselves off, of the heart contracting, then we want to cultivate mudita. May your well being continue to grow. May your good fortune continue. See what naturally arises along those lines for you to really, really wish that that can continue and deepen and stabilize. For others. And that that doesn't take away from what is or isn't possible for us. Just cultivating, opening our hearts. Resonant joy for the good fortune of others. For the well-being of others.
And there may be different people that arise or different situations. Just trust what's arising and continue to cultivate this wish for our hearts to be free from contraction around this. Another moment or two with this aspect of the practice. And then letting that practice subside, perhaps with a releasing breath or reconnecting with the sensations of the ground. And now we'll take the remainder of this practice to cultivate some tranquility, some gathering and unification of the mind, of the tension, as this antidote to the desire, sensual desire hindrance. So for this practice, we choose an anchor for the attention, a place for the attention to rest, this could be the sensation of breath, or perhaps uh, another object could be the sensation of the hands. If you find the breath is not helpful to work with, just feel where your hands are resting and the sensations in the hands. Just choose one of these anchors now, breath sensation or hands. And then like a laser pointer, we direct like a magnet, let all of your attention be drawn towards those sensations that you've chosen. Really get curious as if you've never felt your hands before, or you've never felt this breath before, because you haven't. This breath is unique and it's gone. Each moment, each breath, really pay attention. And really cultivating a sense of enoughness with just resting, resting, giving all of awareness to feeling that one pointed sensation. 
Is there anything that's happening right now that is not enough? Can this just be enough right now? And as you continue for these next two minutes, pointing this one pointed attention at your anchor, a gentle awareness of the sensation of freedom from the hindrance of sensual desire. How does that feel in the body to just rest? With this anchor, free of wanting or needing anything else.
And may we all continue to cultivate this freedom for our own well-being, for the well-being of each other, the well-being of it, this earth, and all beings everywhere. If you've practiced with us on the YouTube channel, um, please check the links below for um, True North Insight. If you are able to offer support, um, the charitable donation, any amount over $5 receives a tax receipt. And uh, right now, all donations are being matched um, by generous donors um which is a great support to the continuing the offering of dharma um in all the ways that true north insight does that so thank you for that and thank you for your support of me um and my ability to continue um sharing as much as i'm able to it's a great privilege and um thank you uh oh and i uh earlier when i was talking when did i stop uh i was mentioning the the requisites the four requisites um you know um when we're talking about generosity and and all of these sense desire and uh and i said shelter and food and medicine and i said rest as the fourth that's because i gave a talk here on rest as a honorary fifth requisite but it's actually um clothing <laughs> i forgot that um yeah so just wanted to uh remedy that error i could tell when i was saying it something wasn't right but i didn't want to linger there so there it is. I still think rest should is a requisite. Um, yes, you can, that's on the YouTube channel. You can check that one out. Uh, thank you for being here and sharing practice with us. <laughs>